Hello and welcome to today's special Halloween season edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to start things off, what are we drinking today? Uh, the Demeter's Fate, a Russian Imperial Stout. Oh, good. Gives buzz. <laughs> today we are going to be counting down five forgotten Frankenstein films. <laughs> start with 1970s horror of Frankenstein. Hammer's attempt at sort of rebooting the, the franchise, yeah. I guess. Rebooting right? their own franchise. <laughs> yeah. They did a little bit of a different take on this one. More of a comedy. It's yeah. not, you know, in your face slapstick comedy, but there's definitely more witty dialogue and, you know, they made Victor Frankenstein a pompous, arrogant, womanizing, <laughs> rich brat. We're gonna have to examine each other closer. <laughs> He's like, oh, should I take my clothes off now or later? I think later. He kills his own dad to get the inheritance. And you don't really know why he's creating this monster. It's more just because He's, he can. He's pompous and he can. He just you know, wants to prove people that he can do something they can't. Ralph Bates as uh, Victor Frankenstein is, I think, very good at being like a pompous prick. You enjoy watching him be an asshole. <laughs> really like the monster design in this. I yeah. I think it's really cool because he is very intimidating looking. Yeah, he's pretty strong yeah. too. Like when he stands up, yeah. you see his muscles and everything. And I like the skull that's like all <laughs> fractured in all these different places. You can see it's been put back together like a puzzle almost. <laughs> right. The second the monster's created, he goes on a murdering spree. Yeah. <laughs> Victor Frankenstein blames all the murders on his cook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, what the fuck? His good friend. <laughs> the monster is played by David Prowse, who also, of course, famously played Darth Vader. Right. And uh, he was also the Frankenstein monster in Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. And the ending is pretty funny. It's yeah. Like it's kind of anticlimactic, yeah. comedic ending. <laughs> no, little girl, don't pull that lever. Oh. oh. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. That's like the whole... Definitely probably one of the first comedic attempts at the Frankenstein story, I think. If you want to see Hammer's fresh take on the Frankenstein franchise, check out Horror Frankenstein. That takes us to number four on our list, and this one is uh, Andy Warhol's Flesh for Frankenstein, 1973. <laughs> this one takes another different turn. He's doing it actually for quite a sinister reason. Yeah. He wants to create a master race yeah. of these superhumans that are gonna basically do his bidding. Yeah, and rule the world. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of neat too, it's different where he's not just making uh, the man first and then later the woman. He's making the man and the woman at the same time right. so they can procreate and, and make this race, you know? <laughs> yeah, but for that they need a brain. A uh, horny brain. <laughs> yeah. It's horny enough to procreate. <laughs> Where are you going to get it, right? They go to the town brothel. <laughs> yeah. With huge shears. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, they get the wrong brain, yeah. naturally. <laughs> Instead of an abnormal brain, <laughs> it's a non-horny brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the wrong fucking kid. And it's not so sleazy, you know, it's not like hypersexual. It's kind of a comedy first sexploitation second. Yeah, they did it in a tasteful way, actually. Yeah. Udo Kier plays uh, Dr. Frankenstein in this, and he, of course, is over the top <laughs> and magnificent at being over the top. Yeah, yeah. To know death, Otto, you must fuck life in the gallbladder! <laughs> <laughs> yes, what the hell does that mean? All the acting in this movie is actually, for what the movie yeah. is, yeah. is actually not bad, right? Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be kind of cheesy and, yeah. and fun. The kids are snooping around and they open like this cupboard and they see like lungs and heart. Oh yeah. Like breathing on its own. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty neat. Yeah. Then at the end he gets nice and bloody. You know? <laughs> exactly. U Udo Kier loses his, ar his arm again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah his, or yeah, his hand yeah. or whatever, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, in that cage. In that cage, <laughs> yeah, that door. <laughs> Yeah, like, what? how would it take your hand right <laughs> off? So if you want like a real fun comedic approach to the Frankenstein story that's, you know, got a little bit of sleaze, a little bit of smut, a lot of blood. But does it all tastefully? Does it tastefully? Check out Flesh for Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, it definitely knows what it is yeah. and what they're doing, right? Yeah. The next one on our list is an actually forgotten film. It was lost and recently recovered. The 1910 version, the Thomas Edison Frankenstein. And it's the first ever 
filmed screen version of that story. It's only like 13 minutes yeah. long, but they managed to actually get the whole point across in yeah. that 13 minutes. They do a really good job. The good. effects for 1910 are really cool, and you know, the, the creation of the monster. In the book, they don't explain how the monster is made, so every film has to do its own interpretation of that, and this right. is kind of different. It's more of like alchemy. Yeah. There is no mad scientist laboratory template at this point that yeah. every movie is basing theirs off of. They were the first to kind of, okay, well, how does he do it? I guess he just uses you know, a cauldron mm -hmm. and the monster comes out and is formed like on screen. It looks really neat. Mm -hmm. And the monster itself looks really cool yeah. and quite creepy, actually. Yeah, very grotesque. It looks like a nightmare. And the ending is is, is <laughs> different. It's not like the ending of the book. You know, they had to wrap it up quick, I guess. But <laughs> yeah. It's really neat. And the effect, again, is neat where he looks in the mirror and... Yeah, he, like, disappears from the from the floor, but he's still in the mirror, Yeah, he's, too, like, right? caught in the mirror. It's yeah, really and then neat. he disappears again. Yeah. So if you want to see, like, the first ever Frankenstein movie that sort of set the tone for everything else to follow, check that one out. You can watch it on YouTube. That brings us to number two on our list here. And this one was made for TV movie, actually. Yeah. It's a 1992's Frankenstein. This one follows the book Pretty damn close, actually. Yeah, really close. The only real difference is there's like a, a psychic link shared between the monster and Victor Frankenstein, which isn't in the book, but it makes sense in the movie. It works. The performances in this movie is really what makes it. And yeah. you wouldn't think it, but Randy Quaid plays the monster. <laughs> and you're like, Randy Quaid playing Frankenstein's monster? But he nails it. So good at the dramatic end of it, where you... You really sympathize with him, and man, you feel sorry for that guy. Patrick Bergen plays Victor Frankenstein in this. Excellent in this movie. Yeah. Fuck, I can't imagine that the guy had a voice left at after, the end. Yeah, <laughs> that one scene after the monster kills uh, his his fiance, and he yeah. runs out of the house, and he's screaming yeah. at the top of I'll his lungs. I'll kill you! Chase you till the end of the earth! Who's <laughs> 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 breathing? And holy shit! The way he creates the monster, he doesn't steal dead body parts. Actually cloning his own body parts using this machine. So he's kind of like God making man in his own image. When he puts his arm through that thing and you yeah. see the arm appear in the tank too, yeah. like the way they do it, yeah. it's really cool. Very cinematic for a, a movie that was not released in cinemas. You really feel like you're put into that time. Probably the first Frankenstein movie I ever saw where I felt really, really sorry for the monster. Because mm -hmm. up until this, all I've ever seen were the universal ones and stuff like that, where it's... Yeah. You know, you don't feel sorry for that guy. But here, <laughs> you really... You, your heart really breaks for the monster. This movie is damn near spot on to the book with yeah. a few small things. And it's very interesting to watch. Whereas a lot of, like, Dracula movies on the flip side, the ones that stay close to the book <laughs> are fucking boring. Yeah. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein came out, what, a couple of years later after this one. You know, that kind of stole all the thunder. Mm -hmm. If this movie, if this 1992 version would have had the budget of that one, I think this would be a lot more well-known and probably known as one of the best Frankenstein movies. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite forgotten, actually, just for the simple fact that it was done for TV. Yeah. That brings us to number one on our list of forgotten Frankenstein movies. And this one comes from one of our favorite movie decades ever. All right. It is 1985's The Bride. That's right. This actually has a pretty all-star cast. Sting is in this, and uh, we all know him from The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a band once, too, I think. Clancy Brown is in this, and uh, we know him from Highlander, I think. Jennifer Beals is in this. She was in Flashdance. And uh, Carrie Elwes is in this, too, right? This one, they skip past all of, like, the useless sort of bullshit that yeah. can bog you down and it gets right to Frankenstein making the bride yeah. and it's really neat how they do it too they got the bride sort of floating in the air it's yeah. really cool yeah I really like the creation uh, <laughs> scene in this Frankenstein finally created this perfect being you know it's a woman and she, there's nothing wrong with her she's beautiful she's stunning terrified of the monster and this fire starts, they assume the monster perished in it, but he didn't. He kind of befriends this little dwarf guy, uh, Ronaldo. Yeah, and they, they form a very close friendship. Teaches 
the monster about life. Yeah. Basically, yeah. and enjoying yeah. life and and how to drink. Yeah, you know, exactly. Gets the monster drunk. <laughs> <laughs> then after when they're all walking on the trail, oh, he's all hung over. And then the other side, you have Doctor Frankenstein teaching the bride how to function in society, high society, high society, and he keeps saying she's gonna be, you know, the first liberated free woman and on the other hand he's super controlling of her the slow progression into like his obsession yeah with her he smacks a lot of people yeah. in this <laughs> he's a prick yeah even like the monster, the monster in the beginning just smacks the monster smacking <laughs> carrie elwes smacking the bride yeah yeah there's a clear class divide in the movie too right which is very interesting and you see how both of them get brought up yeah and also, who has like more fun, who enjoys life a little more, yeah. and who doesn't, yeah. which is kind of interesting. Who's free, yeah, and who's, who's got not. More freedom, yeah. Exactly, and it's like high society, everybody thinks it's so glamorous and great, but actually, it's like a fucking prison. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the lower ed ed ebb of society, you're free, yeah. kind of. Yeah, Frankenstein's traveling, he's kind of seen the world, you know? <laughs> yeah, he has a good friend, they yeah. kind of, you know, they love each other. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Ronaldo! <laughs> yeah. My <And> then... baby! <laughs> when they joined the circus, and they part yeah. of that circus act. It's probably what would happen if the monster was, you know, had to go and live in the world, he'd probably have to join the circus. Right, yeah, because he kind of looks a little <laughs> yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> Another cool thing about this movie is that he just looks a little off. Right. He doesn't look like a monster. He's not. Oh, yeah, he's not. He's not terrifying uh... looking. He doesn't look completely right. But he can still walk into like the bar and sit down and like have a drink. People are gonna stare at him yeah. and maybe mock him a bit, but they're not gonna flee or want to, you know, drive him out of the town. And it's got a, a, a different ending than any other Frankenstein type movie too. So if you want like a good like '80s fantasy approach to the Frankenstein story, um, definitely check out The Bride if you haven't. Uh, it, it, a lot of people shit on it when it came out and right. it, it bombed at the box office, but. I think it's totally worth a watch for any fan of Frankenstein movies. So that's it. That's our top five forgotten Frankenstein films. Um, I'm sure there's many, many more out there. <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> so if you have any Frankenstein movies that you would suggest uh, that are also forgotten or really good, please mention them in the comments. Yep, for sure. I'd love to see it. And until next time, keep drinking. Thank <laughs> you.